Hey sports fans, Coach Nick here and welcome to B-Ball Breakdown. What a way to start your 4th of July celebrations as Kevin Durant has decided to join the Warriors and create what is arguably the best team the NBA has seen at least since the 80s. To understand how Durant will fit into the Warriors' beautiful game, let's first take a look at how the offense is structured. Last year, Golden State was near the bottom in pick and roll frequency, yet lethal in their efficiency. It was their go-to weapon that they could save for opportune times. And with Steph Curry's unique ability to nail threes out of this action, their lead over the second most efficient pick and roll team was .078. That disparity is the equivalent of the space between the second ranked Raptors and the 13th ranked Miami Heat. Curry's sheer range stretches defenses to the breaking point, and when the big comes up, he could get right by for a variety of skilled shots. But the supreme ball movement that Kerr has installed has unlocked much more from the Curry pick and roll by way of creating wide open perimeter shots. Now, Kevin Durant is no stranger to spotting up. He did this 11% of the time in OKC last year, and of the 83 players who spotted up last year at least 200 times, he ranked 10th. The Thunder utilized the Westbrook pick and roll to free up open shots for KD on the weak side, and it's easy to see the similarities between these actions and how seamlessly Durant will fit into the Warriors offense. Having a guard as ball dominant as Russ has helped Durant learn to be effective without the ball. So, in a way, Russ has been training him to be on the Warriors his whole career. And it wouldn't be hard to picture KD playing Harrison Barnes' position, causing the Warriors front office and coaching staff to salivate at the mere idea of generating these types of looks for Kevin Durant after the initial Curry attack. The key here is to check out how much movement the Warriors routinely get before they break into a pick and roll, scrambling the defense into an omelet with cheese. And it had to be one of the biggest selling points for the Durant camp when weighing whether he wanted to take his talents to the Bay Area or not. And Durant is a very good ball handler, capable of initiating the offense himself, and was an elite pick and roll player. When Steph struggled to get going in the playoffs this year, you could bet they would have just turned to KD and said, create something for us. I mean, look at all the space the Thunder could create with Adams, Ibaka, Russ, and Robertson around him. Can you even imagine what he could do with Steph, Clay, and someone like Brandon Rush on the perimeter? And there were moments where the Warriors allowed Harrison Barnes to bring the ball up. And I don't think you'd have to convince Steph how viable it would be to screen for Durant in a high screen and roll for all sorts of goodness. Where the Warriors really made their money last year was off screens. Naturally, with two deadly shooters like Curry and Thompson, running them off of bigs to get a sliver of daylight is a no-brainer. And the way they could stretch the floor off those screens made their offense almost impossible to stop. To give you an idea of how often they used off-ball screens, their frequency was 3.5 percentage points higher than the Pacers. The same amount difference as between the second-ranked Pacers and the 18th-ranked Orlando Magic. The offense used them in a variety of ways, as a simple action to begin the possession, where they can catch the defense off guard with a solid screen and a quick release from three. And KD was no stranger to this type of action, as the OKC offense tended to run pin downs for him exclusively like this. That said, you can see how much slower the Thunder offense moved to get into these actions, and it's clear that with an increased pace, these looks should get even easier for him next year. The best option the Warriors run is their low post split. And what's exciting about this is that Durant can play any of the positions in this and be awesome. When you have Curry and Clay screening for each other, it's almost impossible to switch. And if the screen is set well, you're going to see an open shot on this. First off, imagine KD at the low block on this. Notice how the defense has to be so focused on the movement on the perimeter, it would open up lots of easy shots for him one-on-one -on -one in the post. And the cutting action around him also served to open up jumpers, the kind that KD can hit in his sleep. 
It was remarkable how few cutters the Thunder sent off the post for him, making it even easier for his man to stay with him and causing his post-ups to be much harder. He was an elite post-up scorer anyway, so it's a testament to his incredible skills in the face of all these tough shots, the kind he won't see much anymore in Golden State. Now imagine him being at the top of the key as either Curry or Clay screens for him coming around. And picture the split being run on the weak side for Curry. The defense gets sucked in by his gravity on the cut, and it would open up this shot for Durant to either attack on the dribble or just nail threes all day. And Durant could also be the feeder to the post, screen for Curry, watch his man try and switch this, and give him free runs at the rim all game. In fact, OKC ran this type of action with him and Russ, and there was good motion into a post-up for him on the weak side as well. More indication that Durant will be more than comfortable operating in the Warriors' offense. Just thinking about the possibilities with the lineups, and it's a little murky since the roster will undoubtedly be shaken up to handle KD's contract. But let's assume Iguodala and Livingston remain, and perhaps they won't need to worry too much about a center, using Damian Jones when they want to go big. They still have their small ball lineup of death, but it would need a much more epic name by replacing Barnes with Durant. How about the small ball lineup of Atomic Destruction? You could get a little crazy if Draymond got into foul trouble and play KD at the 5, with Iguodala at the 4, Clay at the 3, Livingston and Curry in the backcourt. Or you could go traditional with Jones at center, Draymond at the 4, KD at the 3, and the Splash Brothers. We haven't even gotten into the defensive side of the ball, but it's safe to say that Durant is a better defender than Barnes, and from what we saw in the playoffs against these same Warriors, there was real evidence that Durant could be a lockdown defender as good as Kawhi Leonard. And if that's the case, then the rest of the league better figure something out quick, because the Warriors will be the prohibitive favorites to win the title every year for at least the next five years, and if we're lucky, we'll be privy to some of the best basketball the world has ever seen.